Dr. Tammy Taylor. And I'm Dr. Sheikha Houston. We're with Create and Educate. Have you ever thought about trying to get what you have to offer in schools? Do you have a book, a service? Are you a small business or an entrepreneur? And you think you have something innovative that would be helpful for children, for teachers, schools or school systems? Well, we have something that will be able to help you navigate that process. As school principals, one of the things that we noticed is being in charge of contracts and the budgets for schools, a lot of times there wasn't a lot of equity around that process for women, for small businesses, or for entrepreneurs. So our system will help you navigate that process and get what you have to offer in front of more children and into more schools. To get started, click on the link that takes you to our webinar that we've created on how to conduct business with schools, and it will help you to begin your process. Hello, my name is Bijanae Kareem, and I'm the founder of BK International Education Consultancy. BK International Education Consultancy is a dynamic company that equips K-12 educators, administrators, and parents with various activities dealing with science, technology, engineering, arts, and math to make learning these subjects fun and interesting. In addition to interactive labs, we provide consulting and grant writing, STEM and STEAM program startup, program evaluation, and cultural immersion tours for educators. To the many services that we offer, we are eager to work with you, so visit us on our website, Facebook, or Twitter, or give us a call at 678-820-9195 to schedule our services today. Great, great day. How are you, Bijanae? I'm okay. I'm trying to make it through the day. Did you hear about Tina Turner? I did. Oh my and she is one of my um, uh, artists that I've always admired. I loved all her work, acting, singing, and just a, a gorgeous, gorgeous um, yes. African-American female, an example of a woman. Love Tina Turner. Absolutely. Yeah, it just breaks my heart that another one of our icons have transitioned on, right? But um, I'm glad... She'll be up there looking down and 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 helping us to to push forward because she was a dynamic powerhouse. Okay, a dynamic powerhouse, talented, super talented. She was so condolence condolences to her family, and uh, definitely all of the fans who loved her just as we did. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Dr. Sheikha Houston, and I am the co-founder of Create and Educate, where we're the home of conducting business with schools and our grant guru here, Ms. Bijanae Kareem with BK International is uh, telling us all about the classroom grants as well as grants for entrepreneurs and small businesses. So we are a part, we come together um, a few times a month for the power of collaboration. And we talk with educators and parents connecting you to great resources, things that will be great for students, sometimes educators. And we have two phenomenal guests with us today. Yes. Yes. Talk about blonde bombshells, right? In honor of <laughs> Tina Turner, we actually have two just so happens today that I can't wait to introduce. <laughs> Definitely. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Bijanae, and I'm going to get us fed through to the groups and then we'll get started. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you, Dr. Dr. Sheikha Houston. Um, as she mentioned, I am Bijanae Kareem. I'm an equity advocate, educator, author, and founder of BK International Education Consultancy, where our social impact mission is to increase student access to innovative education and we do that through grant writing and STEAM education, coaching, training, self-paced courses, toolkits, the whole nine um, to help amplify education equity. And so as Dr. Sheikha Houston mentioned, while we work separately in our respective organizations, we love to collaborate because we know that there's power in collaboration. And that is the thing for tonight. We want to uh, collaborate and connect together to be able to connect educators and parents with great resources. And one of the things that I love to share, having been an educator and an author myself, is to help authors 
tap into funding so that they can increase their readership, increase their sales, help them maybe even write their next book, right? And essentially help them get their books into schools, into the hands of kids, parents, as well as teachers to where they need to be, right? Um, it's so important that on this broadcast that we highlight particularly authors of color to, again, to promote that equity because it's so important for kids um, regardless of what their racial et and ethnic ethnicity is, that they are in contact with culturally rich texts that are engaging, that are thought provoking, um, and that students are, can resonate with, or teachers can resonate with, or parents and families can resonate with. Um, and so tonight, I'm gonna go ahead and, and introduce our two uh, our blonde bombshells. Um, one is Dr. Bisa Batten Lewis, and she is leading a movement, y'all, to help educators get paid for their superpowers. She has been called an educational powerhouse, and with almost three, three whole decades of working in the education space, Dr. Bisa is helping educators to rethink how to bring value to the marketplace. So she offers workshops on how to use your expertise and skills to increase income. And through the PAID method, the paid method, um, in her bestseller, The Paid Educator, she's sharing 10 professional ways to supplement your teaching salary. So I wish I had this book when I was an educator, uh, Dr. Houston, because I was all about the side hustle life. <laughs> um, because as we know, teachers, they, they don't get paid their worth, right? And so Dr. Bisa helps um, to be able to get teachers and educators paid. And not only do we have Dr. Um, Bisa Batten Lewis tonight, we also have Carrie Lee Carrington, and she's an author entrepreneur, literacy advocate, and founder of Read with Carrie Lee Inc. And she's based out of North Virginia. And she has two amazing boys where she enjoys an active lifestyle. She's originally actually from Jamaica, um, but she grew up in New York City before um, making Northern Virginia her home. And she is to some known as the accidental author. So I can't wait to hear about this. She's the accidental author because this was not where she thought she saw her path would lead her. And though she loved writing, being a children's author was the furthest thing from her mind. So ensuring that children have access to diverse literature has become a mission that drives her as an author and an advocate. So I can't wait to pick both of these ladies' uh, minds and um, hopefully they'll leave us some inspirational nuggets um, for tonight. So I'm going to pass it back over to Dr. Houston so she can share a little bit more with us before we pull up our guest, our featured guest tonight. Yes. Thank you, Bijanae. I am excited to hear from our guest. And um, right before we bring them up, just wanted to um, let everyone know a little bit about Create and Educate and how we're helping um, people with services like authors, speakers, small businesses, entrepreneurs connect more um, with public schools. My business partner, Dr. Tammy Taylor and I served as uh, school leaders for, we've been in education for over uh, 20 years each. She, I think 24, mine is like year 22. Wow. But um, we both noticed how at our level, a lot of times some of the innovation that we were needing in, in schools, we had to really just try to go out and seek it. Um, a lot of times in education, we're traditionalists. So we kind of work a lot with the same vendors, same people. Um, we order from the same books sometimes. And when you're really trying to move that academic needle for your students, when you're really trying to find things that actually make a difference with them and connect with them, you kind of got to get outside of the box a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that is the whole reason for the why behind why we created Conducting Business with Schools. We were coming across a lot of people who had great things, but didn't understand that vendor process of how to work with schools. They didn't mm -hmm. know the educanese of how to connect 
with different <laughs> initiatives right. that the schools have or how to talk that lingo. Because if you're not, you know, aware of how to connect yourself with those Title I funds, those federal funds, those Title IV funds, mm -hmm. a lot of times you won't be able to, um, you know, create those opportunities for yourself or know how to best put connect what you're having to offer with what the school needs. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of people just like our guests that we have on today that can help solve some of the problems that we have in education. So conducting business with schools is a way for them to learn some of that lingo, um, develop those email lists and best ways to get your foot in the door, the best times understand that schools do have budgets. A lot of times people feel like uh, schools don't have any money. We're just nonprofits. We have money. And the good thing about nonprofits, we're expected to spend all our money before the end of the year, most That's cases. Right. So, right. um, you know, we don't want people to sell themselves short. Mm -hmm. And we also don't want people to not have the opportunity, especially uh, women, minority-owned businesses, and small businesses that a lot of times don't get those same opportunities as some of our larger, larger groups. Mm -hmm. So um, if you would like more information, we have a link right above the um, this video when it uh, finishes and you can get and we'll put some more links in the chat. But right now we're going to bring up our guest so we can hear the great things that they have to connect to schools and parents. Welcome. Hey, Dr. Bisola. Hey, Carrie Lee. <laughs> hey. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. We are so excited to have you. So, um, Carrie Lee already, you know, have read your bios, and we'll start with Dr. Bisa. Tell us a little bit about um, what you have, your paid program, and how you, um, what the why behind why that got started. Just tell us a little bit about, about your program and how people can connect with it. Yes, thank you for the invite. I am so excited to be here with other fellow educators. That's right. <laughs> yes. So I have been uh, in education since 1993. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell you, I have had the pleasure of working in several, several different capacities. So not only in the classroom, not only in administration, um, but also as a consultant and trainer in a variety of ways. And um, as a person, most educators, as a profession, we like to give back. You know, anyone in personal services, your nursing, your uh, medical professionals, education professionals, we love to give back. But... I like to make sure that we are balancing our give back and uh, in our earning. So I wrote the PAID Educator in uh, 2019. It launched January 2020 with the goal of starting a movement to help educators earn what they deserve. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves, we, you know, I'm a GPK. My, my grandfather was a pastor. So we find ourselves, yes, we, we volunteer at, at church. We help write the curriculum. We help train the teachers. We help teach, teach the curriculum. Um, how many books have you written as educators or help someone else write that you didn't get uh, compensated or any type of award for? So, out of all the work that I have done with mommy baby toy companies, uh, with uh, national organizations, you know, I forgot when payday was. Mm. And that's what sparked the book, honestly. Oftentimes in the teacher's lounge, uh, I would hear, you know, educators getting excited. And I'm like, what, 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 what's important about today? They're like, yeah, today. And what is today? It was the end of the month. It was payday. It, <laughs> you'll get paid once a month at most places. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't pay they was because of the businesses, the business I had on the side and the work I was doing on the side, I wasn't thinking about my bank account. Mm -hmm. And I want to share that with others because in the teacher's lounge, I also noticed that educators were struggling at the 10th of the month. <laughs> They were mm -hmm. the last 20 days mm -hmm. and definitely the last 10 days of the month. And I said, I did not want to sit on this knowledge that I had. I wanted to help them as well. But here's the thing. It sounds like bragging when you're sitting in the teacher's lounge and you're trying to help them to learn to hone in on their skills and use them to make more money. You know, 
I will often hear them say, well, Beast, I don't have what you have. I don't have a business. You know, I can't do that. So they just dismiss the whole idea. Mm-hmm. So I decided I'm just going to write it in a book. Mm-hmm. I started out writing a memoir about my life. A lot of my mentees have been saying, when are you going to write a memoir? I started out writing a memoir and it turned into this. Mm-hmm. And it's 10 professional ways to supplement your teaching salary, the PAID educator. It launched as a bestseller in January 2020. I was so excited. Um, and then I have the companion journal as well. But the professional part is really important. Why? Because educators during the holidays and on weekends, they're working in department mm-hmm. stores. Mm-hmm. They're driving you know, ride sh- for ride share uh, companies. They're doing jobs where they have so many skills that they could implement. And so I wanted to help them to hone in on those skills and realize that, hey, not only it's not just about the money, it's more about the knowledge and skills that we have that the community needs. They need us Mm -hmm. to show them better ways in all of our different fields, professions. And so I wanted to make sure that educators are put on boards and foundations as well as, so we're in the room, boardroom. But we're also getting paid uh, for the work that we do on the side. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that's really something that is needed, you know, in a time where we are struggling to even keep educators in the Mm -hmm. profession. Mm -hmm. Some of it for the pay, but um, some of it just because of bureaucracy and things that are being passed down Mm -hmm. um, that you know, it's sometimes out of our control because of the legislature, but um, having those extra streams of income or Mm -hmm. showing them how to do that is a great way, innovative way to think outside of the box to retain teachers. So I Mm -hmm. love that. Um, Definitely should be something our HR directors are uh, looking to purchase in order to make sure that you know, we have another way that we could potentially retain teachers. Mm -hmm. And she can, may I add right quick, um, right before we hear from Carrie Lee, um, educators get nervous when they hear the PAID. They think it's paid. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes, it's paid, but I wanted an acronym that people could remember. Mm -hmm. So it's a method. It's the PAID method. So P is prospects. Mm -hmm. A is allies. I, information, and then the dollars. D is for dollars. So it's a method of increasing your income. So I want to put that out there for all those uncomfortable educators. <laughs> well, thank you. And I see we have um, Principal Sherrod Laws and Principal Josh Tovar joining us. So um, these will definitely be some great resources, gentlemen, that you could uh, purchase as gifts, actually. Yes, uh, for your teachers, I used to get my teachers Christmas gifts, welcome mm-hmm. back gifts for the start of school. So those mm-hmm. would make great gifts for educators. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we move on to our next question, Carrie Lee, could you tell us what I know that you have multiple books yeah. and um, tell us about your books and a little bit about the why um, and how we can connect your books to schools? Uh, Well, thank you for having me on again. Um, It's been a while. (laughs) Um, I am, as I was introduced, you know, I started out being an accidental author. Mm -hmm. Um, I am, you know, I'm surrounded by educators here, but I am the daughter of an educator, um, of a former educator. Um, My mom was a lifelong educator and um, a literacy coach. So I definitely, my hats are off to you and I know I'm definitely in great company. Um, but as I said, you know, I started off as an accidental author. Um, I, my son came to me um, when he was in kindergarten and told me that um, a, a classmate said to him that he should only be playing with children of the same skin color. Mm. And mm. that was not something that I have taught him or that, you know, he learns from home. So I said, you know, I wanted to find a way to have him understand that. And I couldn't find any books on his grade level. And um, so my mom, who was a literacy coach, said, if I can't find it, write it. 
And that's when I wrote the book, Everyone Just Like Me. And Everyone Just Like Me kind of took off. And um, this came out in uh, 2018. And uh, in 2020, around the time of the George Floyd um, murder, uh, it started to kind of pick up steam and people started to um, talk about it more. And I was getting people really questioning me um, about why I wrote it. And, and it was even um, featured in a guide for teachers to be able to speak to students about social issues. Mm -hmm. So that for me kind of started the, the momentum. And even before that, um, I had actually uh, written Pretty Hair. And that, um, everyone just like me really started a platform for me because I wanted to help children to embrace the differences of themselves and others mm -hmm. and to really create a kinder world. I truly believe that a lot of the problems and a lot of the racial profiling, stereotyping and everything like that comes from um, us not being able to understand each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of what children are taught about bullying and, you know, basically being respectful of each other, it's taught, well, it started to be taught more in middle school. And mm -hmm. I felt, you know, definitely this needs to be something that's taught at a pre-K. That's right. Even mm -hmm. early elementary school level. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wrote these books as a tool to and really an icebreaker for parents and teachers to get into the conversation with students at that early age so that when they grow and when they get up to middle school when bullying is rampant and it's almost hard to control mm -hmm. they will know how to understand and know how to navigate and say okay well you know instead of saying your hair is messy or you know using a derogatory term towards another student they will have the understanding that they have learned um, in the past. And, you know, I know at, at the top of the the show, we uh, you mentioned about Tina Turner, and I'm a little bit glad that I was able to find out before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that to me, like, Tina Turner is one of my favorite mm -hmm. artists. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up on Tina Turner, and with my latest book, My Sin's Country, Tina Turner is mentioned. Oh, yeah. perfect. Because, perfect. Exactly. So when, when I saw, when I heard the news, I was just like, oh my gosh. And then, you know, when he reached out to me, I said, oh, I have to definitely speak about it. And she is, I, I do highlight her in the book and also having her bio here. You may not be able to see it, but get the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, really teaching uh, in my sex country teaches children to live beyond their stereotypes because mm -hmm. especially getting into the children's literature genre genre and mm -hmm. really delving into seeing the lack of diversity that mm -hmm. there is in children's mm -hmm. literature i was mm -hmm. blown away i i could i still can't believe that in 2023 there are i think we have hit 12 percent but even if yeah, yeah. only um, only yeah, 12. well only 12% of books yeah. right of children's literature depict a a person of color mm -hmm. as one of the main characters and of those 12% only 30% are being written by authors of, of color, color. Mm -hmm. so wow. if you have if you have, you know, someone that is not of um, your background or culture writing about your culture, that's when stereotypes get get depicted and perpetrated and spread. You know, um, I, I don't want my child thinking that he is less than because someone, you know, saw his culture as primitive. You know, mm -hmm. those those buzzwords that we get primitive or 
um, even aggressive. And those descriptions that we get about our own people, our children, mm-hmm. you know, from, and they're getting that from someone else. Mm-hmm. So um, that's been a goal of mine, a passion of mine to really um, help authors who they may not have the platform. Um, I also have Read With Carolee on YouTube to be able to help authors get their books out. And um, I also uh, recently, over the past couple months, started a publishing company so that I would be able to help authors to Mm -hmm. be able to write the stories in the first person. Nice. Write about their cultures in that um, first person so that we don't have anyone coming in and stating, you know, derogatory terms and and derogatory things about a culture. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Like, you know, my bio said, I am, I was born in Jamaica. There are certain things that I would not feel comfortable. And some people may say, okay, oh yeah, you could write about it because, you know, you're, um, you're black. (laughs) I'm like, I'm, I'm not African American. I I am Jamaican. I write from the perspective that I know. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to write what I don't know about, I would rather help someone else to be able to get that story out. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's my why. That's why I continue to do this and continue to, to write these books. Um, you know, my six country, I, I was that little girl that uh, wanted to say country. Right. So, yeah. Well, I know. love that, um, Carrie Lee, everything yeah. that, that you've stated. Um, when we look in education about the problems that we have around literacy within the gaps or the perceived gaps, yeah. Um, with students' per- performances uh, amongst the different demographics, one of the biggest things that has to happen when you're learning to read is that you have to be able to connect with your text. Yeah, and it's exactly. difficult a lot of times to connect with things that you don't see yourself in, mm-hmm. that you can't relate to that uh, background of the story. So having those books that are culturally relevant, that are written by African American or um, people of color, you know, it's, it's essential for our children to be able to connect. And I've even experienced it as a parent with my own daughter. She was, okay. her school was doing a poetry unit and she was saying, mommy, I don't, I don't really like any of this. And, you know, I don't want to do it. She wasn't interested in it because it wasn't interesting to her. So when I gave her some uh, books that I had that were poetry books written by African-American authors, she said, oh, as soon as she opened the book, oh, I like this one. You know, mm-hmm. just that fast, there was a connection made because they were coming from a lens that she could relate to. Mm-hmm. So um, it is definitely something that is essential. And that's why my partner and I are really passionate about the work that we do, because a lot of times our children are the ones that are slighted and labeled behavior problems because they don't have things that they can engage with or connect to. And so they start to act out. But exactly. Because yeah. a lot of times we're not doing what we need to do to make sure that their needs are being met. Right. Yeah. And you mentioned a couple of things, Carrie Lee. You mentioned that one, you're accidental author, right? And then now you're in empowering, um, budding authors to write their stories, right? So if yeah. you were to get just one one little nugget, one little tip away for free today on the broadcast, one little tip, what tip would you offer to an author, a budding author? What's one tip in terms of like writing a book? Well, the, the one that is paramount is be authentic. Okay. You know, there are so many authors out there that um, they just said, oh, well, you know, okay, I think I'll write a book. <laughs> to make some money. It, it, this, is not, this is not just about making money. Um, the passion has to come from inside yeah. at first because mm-hmm. children, they have no filter and they can, they can spot a fake a mile away. You know, if they don't feel your energy, you know, or your excitement coming off the page, Mm-hmm. How how you are descriptive in in what you're writing, 
-hmm. if you're just, you know, going to write, oh, Mary had a little lamb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to feel that. Right. You know, it's like yeah. the, um, the, the nurse here said, Mary had a little lamb. Her fleece was white as snow. You know, if, if they didn't put that fleece was white as snow in there, they were like, Mary had a little lamb. Okay, so what about the lamb? Right, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. so that that your authenticity is paramount in anything that you do, but especially as adults, yeah. right, for mm -hmm. children. That's a great tip. And I want to pass it and ping, point it, ping pong it over to you, Dr. Visa. Same question. If there was just one, just one tip that you were you would give a budding author about writing a book, what would that be? What would that Start, be? Get started. Write while it's fresh. You know, we have all these ideas and they leave us. You know, mm -hmm. um, if we, we don't start on it, we just keep saying, I, I can't tell you how many people tell me, you know, I want to do this. Or I had an idea for that. <sighs> how many of us wish we would have created Uber or Lyft? Right. <laughs> about it before it came out, but we didn't right. move on it, right? right? How many of us thought of something like Airbnb, a business idea? Now look at it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we have these ideas and we sit on them and other people sit around and make the money and we become their customers. Mm -hmm. so how many people's customers have you become when you could have been the entrepreneur yourself? So mm -hmm. get started and write and write again while you feel like it. Mm -hmm. um, I go against the status quo uh, when it comes to my time. When I am inspired, what I have learned about myself at the ripe age of 50 <laughs> is that um, I learned this a couple of years ago about myself. I have to write while the iron, while, while the iron is hot, while iron is hot, while I feel creative, mm -hmm. I get it done. Because guess what? It may be a while before I feel it like I did before. Mm. Uh, so while you, I, some my best work has been done overnight. Okay. Mm. okay. So I'm not one of those people people who will say, "Stop writing." You as midnight, go to bed. No, you write until you get it out of you. Mm. My best work has been done at night. My first children's book was um, "How Flowers Get the Colors," published in 2004. Okay. And uh, I relaunched it last year with all new graphics because back then uh, we didn't have the publishing options that we have now. Okay. So I have a great publisher now with all these options and I was able to relaunch it. And I also say another all nighter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, another all nighter was Wings Curriculum. Uh, Wings Curriculum I launched in 2009, uh, and it is a national curriculum for birth to five year olds, and it's mm -hmm. used in, in 28 states right now. And uh, these are just the lesson plan books, but it has uh, five total books. Oh, nice. but, um, I When I wrote Wings, guess what? To, to the bulk of it, the times when I got the bulk of it done to mm -hmm. my satisfaction, mm -hmm. likely an all nighter. Okay. But it was in me and I got it out of me. And when I launched it, people love it. Most people who use it, I mean, 90% of our customers keep using it. Uh -huh. So all the different school systems, pre K's, Head Starts, uh, they love the curriculum. And so we just keep, you know, the materials coming. So I tell you out there, you guys have an idea. Some of the textbooks you're using, some of the curriculum programs you're using, you don't like them. <laughs> but it's really to use it. And so that's how WINGS came about. I love an acronym, y'all. We do an education, wonder, interest, needs, goals, and skills. We mm -hmm. use wonder, interest, and needs of children to teach their goals and skills. And so uh, I came out with WINGS that that idea came because I was doing consulting. Mm -hmm. uh, Chakra centers get accredited, nationally accredited. And I would ask them for their curriculum and they would say, this is what we use, but they nobody had a book, nobody had anything. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it was too convoluted mm -hmm. for them to use, it was too much. Right. So I made it where it was uh, user friendly. And so what Carolee said earlier, say earlier, if, it's, if it doesn't exist, write it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. So mm -hmm. I definitely say strike while the iron is hot. Mm -hmm. Find out when your creative time is. Mine mm -hmm. is late at night or in the middle of the night. Okay. Find your creative time. I love that. And you and you are so right. So what I realize about myself is I'm not a night owl, but mine is early in the first thing in the morning. I have Me all too. the energy. Dr. Shika yeah. too, right? Yeah. That's where all cylinders are firing. And mm -hmm. just as you said, my mom was pressing me for a while, like, write a book, write a book. I'm like, write a book on what? Right? Write a book on what? And similar to what you were saying about wanting to take your knowledge, Dr. Visa, 
as an educator and be able to put it on paper so that you can share with others and start a movement. Exact same thing that I ended up doing during the pandemic when what, what were we doing at home, <laughs> had some time, didn't have to drive, you know, up and down the streets, up and down the roads. And that was when I found my time to like, oh, OK, let me go ahead and get this book together. And what is the book going to be? It came to me it's like I want to create a movement to where we're providing additional supports for teachers to where teachers are not having to spin out of pocket for supplies, right? Mm -hmm. Yours was, how can they turn their talents, monetize their, their God-given gifts um, um, and get them using the PAID method, right? And ours was, we want to end teachers spinning out of pocket for supplies because we already know they don't get paid what they deserve in the first place. But the other thing is, there are millions of dollars out there in classroom grants yes. and educators don't know about it. And mm -hmm. so what I've been able to do is to share with the everyday educator. If you've ever written a lesson plan, we show how mm -hmm. that lesson plan is just like a grant application. It's just mm -hmm. like a grant application. So mm -hmm. we've taken that and turned it into an Amazon bestseller too, um, called 12 Quick Steps to Writing Winning Classroom Grants. And guess what the beauty is about grants is once you know the 12 quick steps, steps you can use it for classroom grant writing, school uh, grant writing. If you're an administrator, um, you could use it for PTAs. You can use it for nonprofits. You can use it. I use it for my own business as well. So once you get these 12 steps, you can use it for whatever. And especially for authors such as yourself, you all have multiple books. I'm so impressed. I got to I got to get to my second one. I have to get to my second one. Um, but we have a course that we're rolling out specifically for grant writers, for educators, grant writing for educators um, that have books inside of them, right? Like you said, they have curriculum that uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't really reach my kids, right? But mm -hmm. they have these stories inside of them and there's money to help them fund those projects. Um, we have an online course that helps them to effectively pitch their book or their educational service for funding how to decode those key components of a grant application, how to even locate where is the, where are the dollars, right? Where are, where's this funding that you speak of yeah. for your book or for your service? And then how to build your budget to cover your expenses. So whether you're trying to write a new book or write your first book, whatever it is, um, we, we can help you with that process. So Sheikah's course is on how to conduct business with schools because I know I was a school teacher. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know the process. Mm -hmm. And I worked in the school system. So I love her course because she's dropping all the gems. And then our course is on how to get your books into school by being able to tap into those grant funds. So you're not having to give those books away for free because they cost. They cost printing costs. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Those graphics for those illustrators, all those things mm -hmm. for the typesetters. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to share that with everybody, too. Dr. Sheikah. Mm -hmm. yeah. were, were you getting ready to say something, Dr. Bisa? I just wanted to push the push our listening audience today on the grant writing, um, because and, and I mentioned a little bit, it's a chapter on grant writing in here, not not based on your books, but more of this yeah. experience to push people to write grants. Mm -hmm. When I was a college faculty member, uh, full time college faculty member back in the 90s, um, y'all, I was able to make a third of my salary in the summer because wow. college faculty don't get paid in the in summers the summer. like teachers. They're, they're, most of the time mm -hmm. it's not prorated. So you have two months in the summer where you don't get paid. And so you have to, you know, just budget yourself. Mm -hmm. But when I found out that mm -hmm. I can make a third of my salary in the summertime, mm -hmm. she made every coin. Writing grants. <laughs> That's right. Through. Grant writing. That's right. You write once you learn. It's like following instructions. I love the lesson plan, um, the way you compare it to, compare it to a lesson plan, because educators know how to do that. Yeah. I just want to push and urge you all to follow Sheikha and Bijane, uh in, in their books and learn how to write grants, because you will not be sitting around waiting on the end of the month to come for your paycheck. You'll be good. And you'll be helping out the community without them paying for those services. That's exactly Definitely. Right. Um, thank you, ladies, for everything that, that you've shared. And um, I want to encourage our listening audience to make sure that you, we, Dr. Taylor and I, my business partner, encourage leaders to think outside of the box. Make sure that you are getting your teachers, classroom libraries, 
um, stocked with books that mm -hmm. all yeah. students, every student in every class should be able to see themselves in a book, um, yeah. you know, cultural, relevant teaching needs to really start with the adults. We, mm -hmm. we have to be culturally competent before we start trying to do culturally relevant lessons, because I've also seen that go mm -hmm. terribly wrong with my own daughters where, um, you know, something was intended to be something that was providing awareness, but was actually very offensive. Yeah. So thankfully, I was able to help build their capacity. I know sometimes people hate to have educators, children in their classrooms, but, you know, I... <laughs> I, I can't, you know, let children, um, you know, be harmed by something because of someone's lack of knowledge mm -hmm. about how to go about doing something. So, you know, that training for your educators uh, definitely is something that our company offers is, is through our educational consulting. But we have a newsletter that all of the people who have been on our platform, all of the great resources that we have found, um, we add to that every time someone comes on because we want people to know about the great resources that are out there and that could add to classrooms and to schools. So if you are a speaker, um, small business, we have connected with great software companies that have great things for even lesson planning, for us to be able to get feedback uh, that we connected to that we had never heard of. They didn't understand the process to get into schools. And, you know, we showed them that process. And it can be kind of, um, I don't know why some things are, so I, I have my my own. Um, <laughs> why they're not streamlined. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my thoughts behind why things are the way they are. Sometimes it is to be exclusionary. But that's why we wanted to offer some equity around that process, because mm -hmm. we noticed that it's not very diverse. Um, mm -hmm. It is not very uh, inclusive of a lot of small businesses. And to be honest, education really has become like the middleman to testing companies mm -hmm. and our larger educational um agencies mm -hmm. that, um, you know, offer services and products to students. But then when you look at the results that we're getting, they're mm -hmm. not there. Right. So we've got to do something different. We have to do things that are best for children. Mm -hmm. And we've got to stop lying in people's pockets with things that are not working for every student. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, our course, uh, Conducting Business with Schools, is definitely something that can help small businesses and anyone who has something that could connect well to a school. If you're not sure, uh, we've even offered some advice around how to tweak what you may have mm -hmm. to better connect with um, what the needs are of schools, because sometimes they're not People are not aware of certain things that are required by the state that we have mm -hmm. to do. So some things won't make sense, but you can make a tweak here or there and it could be something that is useful. So we we provide that advice as well. Any closing remarks, Bijane or Carrie Lee, Dr. Visa? I just appreciate them for coming. And just the fact that, I mean, we didn't anticipate um, our fallen angel, Tina Turner, um, passing mm -hmm. today, but in her homage, it's just so great that we had, like I said, two blonde bombshells <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that are that are doing the thing and that are also powerhouses in, in the authorship, right? So um, mm -hmm. thank you all for taking your time today. Thank you for your talents. Um, and these are great resources for for educators and parents and students. Just just phenomenal work. And thank you for keeping them coming. Thank you for keeping them coming. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Were you going to say something, Carrie Lee? I'm putting everybody's information in the chat while we're closing out okay. or in the comments. Well, no, I, I just encourage all teachers out there to really make sure that your um, your libraries are diverse, uh, you know, and not all of the books that are out there, unfortunately, that may have a character of color is really about, 
you know, uh, that that character really. And I just want to, so I, I just really want to encourage you. You can um, go on my website. You can go on my YouTube to see um, some of the books that are out there. Um, I and I know I might get in trouble for this a little bit, but you know, branch out from the large publishers oh. um, because oh, yeah, that yeah, honestly, that's what saying that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, I, I have seen some some people that have had, I would say, the soul edited out oh, of yes. their books. Yes. Um, I mm -hmm. am self-published. I help other self-published authors. And um, the books that are coming out now are books that really are geared towards the children of today. Mm -hmm. We love Dr. Seuss. We love where the wild things are. We love all those other books, but those authors are mm -hmm. past, mm -hmm. and you know they don't know about the children of today. Some mm -hmm. books they, they may be classics, but they are classics, and yes. they don't always. It's not one book for everyone. There mm -hmm. are books that will be able to teach children. Um, my books, you know, even though they may be of children of color on there, they're not just for children of color. They are to help all of us have an understanding of each other. So mm -hmm. really seek out those books that will be able to touch the hearts and minds of the children that you teach. Most definitely. Yeah. And uh, see Arcella. Austri, she's an awesome educator that um, helps children and in intervention. So um, she's been on with us before and shared her knowledge. So um, also, if you all would share this with with other educators and um, not just educators, but parents as well. Um, me having my own library at home is how I've been able to make sure my daughters have what they need when they're studying something in school and they're saying, oh, this is boring. I don't like this. I can supplement at home with mm -hmm. something that I know that they can connect with, but mm -hmm. it's still relative to the assignment. So parents, yes. we are always our children's first teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that your home library is stocked up and make sure that you are involved enough to know what's going on with your child's assignment to be able to supplement because the, te the, the teacher does not know your child better than you. Mm -hmm. So you yes. make sure you stock up and get what your, your child needs as well. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dr. Visa. Yeah, I, I guess it's on my face, huh? <laughs> Uh, a couple, a, just a couple of quick things. So I serve as president of Black Child Development Institute Atlanta. Uh, mm -hmm. We're the uh, Georgia affiliate of the National Black Child Development Institute. And so I had to do some advocacy around um, literacy because a lot of the books we were receiving for our Read to Succeed program, uh, they were they either, first of all, were low quality from big publishers. They mm -hmm. were paper. They had two staples. Mm -hmm. No, we can do better than that. Mm -hmm. So I advocated for more quality books. But mm -hmm. as I was advocating, this is really important um, to everyone. As I was advocating, uh, what I learned was, so they were telling me, well, Bisa, the books for um, with Black authors or Black children families, they cost more. And so well, I'm like, we need to develop a whole campaign around that then. They do. They do. And so what I found out was this is why they cost more. People aren't buying them in bulk. Mm. So get your your saras and your and your and your bros and you know pull them all together and your church members and you all buy black books in bulk. Mm -hmm. Find the one and two first, the one download, buy them in bulk. That mm -hmm. will reduce the price and it will also increase the popularity to where uh, publishers will want to um, to carry those. And then lastly, I wanted to share. Tomorrow is the big day. <laughs> um, my summer institute launches tomorrow. I like to do a summer institute because educators are getting off work and they have little time and they're trying to find themselves in the summer. So the PAID Educator Summer Institute is my, my paid educator forum. Mm -hmm. uh, you get five uh, live sessions with me. 
and also a one-on-one -on -one coaching session to help you uh, to get your business started or to refresh it or whatever you want to do with your entrepreneurial idea. So um, my link will be in the in the information that sent out. And uh, you can, uh, when you go to my website, you'll see the pop-up will be there. It just, you know, subscribe. When the newsletter comes out in the morning, you will be able to register for my Summer Institute. Thank you guys for this space today. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, ladies, for joining us. And one of the things with conducting business with schools, we encourage you to make sure you're soliciting the schools for bulk orders. When we, Dr. Taylor and I, um, bought those books for our classroom libraries, those were bulk orders mm -hmm. because we set aside in our budget a certain amount of funds that were to be spent on literacy specifically. So all of those funds had to be spent on books and we make sure that it's diversified. It's not just from one um, particular vendor or, you know, one group is represented. I made sure every student at my school was represented in the orders that I did for literacy. And I encourage all leaders to do the same thing. So. Ladies, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for dropping the gems from your inspiration and your why to um, a nugget, a tip, a, 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 a treasure for aspiring and budding authors. And then just also just sharing with us yourselves. We greatly, greatly appreciate that. Most definitely. And we're going to end with, and ladies, if you'll hang on with us. Um, there, the M Little Mermaid, of course, there's been lots of controversy around that. And as, as we're having these conversations about um, representation and diversity in books, we know that there's this campaign of people, and, and we're looking at Florida and, and the governor there, banning curriculum, banning books. Even I saw um, Amanda Gorman's poem that she read has been banned from a school because of a parent's request. So it, it's really gotten completely out of control. Um, I hope that um, everyone goes out and supports The Little Mermaid. There was controversy about the the person playing the, um, what's the young lady's name? Kelly Bailey. Yes. Kelly Bailey. She was African-American and playing that part. And so many people had uh, such a fit about it. So I hope that, you know, we all get out to support the movie. And we're going to end with a book from one of our previous guests who has a Little Mermaid book. And um, an African-American character is depicted in her book. So we're going to end with the trailer. Ladies, you hang on with us if you don't mind. And thank you all for joining us. Please get out to see the Little Mermaid right. again. Tomorrow. Yeah. All Tomorrow. right. Thank you. Let me get in here and play it. <laughs> Thank you.